Today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. The human experience is both infinite in its expanse, yet circular in its repetition. As time moves forward, we are carried alongside with it. From milestone to milestone, we continue to evolve ways in which we can leave our mark on this world. So it begs to ask the question, y'all feeling horny? This is a tale of Devil Daddy. To appreciate the full story in a picture, sometimes knowing how it was taken is key. Devil Daddy is the photo, and Jeremy Spencer is the photographer. Jeremy Spencer is an American musician-songwriter that hails from Oakland City, Indiana. He would find his early roots as a young boy drumming his heart out in multiple different local bands. I actually started playing drums when I was like six years old, so my grandma bought me like an $80 drum kit from Sears or something and uh, off I went. Being influenced by the bulk of 80s metal bands, Jeremy fit right in and made quick friends with people such as future Five Finger Death Punch guitarist Jason Hook. In 2005, Jeremy Spencer would find his humble beginnings alongside Zoltan and Bathory as they formed the soon-to-be massive Five Finger Death Punch. With member slots filled out and a passionate young Ivan Moody on vocals, they were ready for the world. The band hit the ground running in 2006. Within one year, they would write and release their debut full-length titled The Way of the Fist. And from this point on, the band soared to success. In 2009, they would drop War is the Answer, debuting at number 7 on the Billboard Top 200 and selling over 500,000 units. With such accolades as their song Lift Me Up receiving the golden God's Award for Song of the Year, as well as their 2015 record Got Your Six debuting at number one on Billboard Top Album Charts, and with Jeremy himself being voted Best Drummer of 2015 by Loudwire. They were unstoppable. Uh-oh. Bandwidth throttle. Let me guess, you're not using NordVPN? Otherwise you would have had all your internet traffic encrypted, and you would have avoided service providers slowing down your streaming speed. And that's because Nord is the fastest VPN across all the lands. Now humor me for a moment. Imagine, you're sitting there on your favorite webcam site, Omegle. Then all of a sudden, boom. Some 12-year-old kid comes up and says, I bet you I could guess your IP address. Grr, you think to yourself. I wish there was something I could do to punish this 12-year-old boy. Wait a minute. I have NordVPN. This little nerd can't even see my IP address. And now I can call his bluff, catch this dub, and maybe date his mommy. The possibilities are truly Nordless. Listen, I know this is a lot. You're probably freaked out thinking the cyber police are on your way to steal and sell your data right now. But it's not too late to achieve all of the benefits of using NordVPN. There's still time. Time to wildly increase your level of life convenience with features like finding streaming platforms at a lower price or having access to streaming platforms that aren't even available in your country. All right, check this out. I've been showing my homie all the dopest horror movies lately, and he said he wanted to take a break from all this good good and watch a dumb fun zombie movie. So I thought to myself, well how about Overlord? Little war zombies, what's more dumb fun than that? Only problem is, North America doesn't have Overlord available, but Japan does. So all I had to do was switch my virtual location over to Japan, and boom, all the oh. zombies you could ask for. Thanks Japan. By using Nord, you'll have access to over 5,500 servers in 59 countries, making it super easy to find a server near you for better internet speed, or even find a server in a faraway location for more content. Not much for the telly, are we? Well, how about gaming? With NordVPN, you can avoid DDoS attacks while gaming that would otherwise significantly slow down your connection, all while blocking malware-ridden sites. And all of this can be done on up to six devices. If you want to freely watch Devil Daddy videos without the fear of IP hackers using this information against you, then head on over to nordvpn.com slash dicky7861. And for the people in the back, that's n-o-r-d dot c-o-m forward slash D-I-C-K-E-Y-7861. And if you do, you'll receive four bonus months when buying the NordVPN two-year plan. Thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video, and a huge thank you to all of you for watching. Now then, let's let the sin begin. Again. The, the sequel. Let the, let the sin begin. In 2018, the unstoppable force Five Finger Death Punch would meet an immovable object. Back pain. The now 46-year-old Jeremy was replaced for the fall tour by the now current Five Finger Death Punch drummer, Charlie Engen, so he could undergo a critical surgery to his back. But ultimately, it would be for naught, as Jeremy would later announce his permanent departure from the band. 2019 would be an incredibly interesting year for Jeremy, but nonetheless a productive one, as he was sworn in as a reserve police officer in his home state of Indiana while oddly still living in Las Vegas. It was right outside my hometown, yeah, in Rockport, Indiana. I had some friends that are, uh in the police department, they're like, hey man, would you be interested in coming back here and taking the test and seeing if you can get in and we can probably get you in. I'm like, 
Wow. Yeah, yeah, let's try it. Oh, yeah. And, you know, he just casually produced, wrote, composed, and starred in an erotic horror parody series called Lady Killer TV, in which they parody iconic horror movies by making them worse. Some of the standout Lady Killer TV episodes are such legendary titles as The Sexorcist. I mean, come on. Who hasn't thought of that classic one? Oh, we got a, a, a Nightmare on Elm Street parody. This is a fun one. It's called One, Two, Eddie's Coming in You. But also, why not... Why not just call him Freddy? But like spell it, spell it with like an I. I mean, you you use the same Freddy Krueger costume in the video, so it's not like you're trying to like hide that it's Freddy Krueger. It's who the fuck is Eddie? Ooh, then there's my personal favorite, a sexy parody of Alfred Hitchcock's iconic horror film, Psycho. Now, I know you're probably sitting there thinking, hmm, what clever sex word will they go with for this one? Well. They went with Psycho, as in, oh, you thought this was a normal motel? Well, Psycho, you're getting devil dick. I genuinely don't understand the point of this specific project. Most classic horrors are already exploitive with their softcore sex elements and tons of gore. So why make these really poorly acted renditions of these classic films, but add literally nothing to it? Do the porn stars make it parody? So it's so meta, bro, you don't get it. The whole thing is, is a metaphor for how horny I am. It just feels like a 13-year-old boy's wet dream. Uh, what to hang out with porn stars and watch rated R movies. Sounds so epic. It was so obvious. All the pieces were there from the beginning. How could we not have seen it coming? As a flourishing musician playing with Five Finger Death Punch, Jeremy was able to satiate his love of pyrotechnics and heavy music. But he always felt like something was missing. Being in the literal shadows of the band stuck behind the drum kit, Jeremy felt his personality wasn't able to shine. So an idea was born. A persona. One just as iconic as Gene Simmons' demon. Birthed unto us was the dangerous devil daddy and his down bad demons in Psychosexual. Psychosexual came hot out the furnace with an intense image, a goth rock sound, and a fucking horny set of well-produced music videos showcasing raw sex appeal delivered through the sound of their debut album, Torch the Faith. Their music and identity as a whole was very polarizing, but the main point of contention was Jeremy's new stage persona, Devil Daddy and what that represented. A way for Jeremy to live out and discuss the more perverse and vulgar parts of his mind. Although this would be a heartwarming moment in Jeremy's life as he gets to live out his childlike dream of being a confident ghoulish frontman, it was also a rough time as the public perception was less than positive. As the highs of living a sex god's fantasy dimmed and the limelight focused to an empty room, Jeremy would think to himself, it's just not horny enough. And then overnight, as quickly as they came, Psychosexual was taken out back and wiped from all social medias. It seemed as though the internet's cruelty had claimed another victim. But then, something happened. Well now how- oh, who the hell are you? Psycho Sinner on your grave. Four days later, Devil From Hell and Unholy both drop. Two days after that, Love On The Grave music video. As a phoenix rises from its own ashes, Psycho Sinner arose from the brimstone of Psychosexual. And leading this ship was the familiar design, newly named Grim Sinner as devil and as daddy as ever. Regarding the abrupt eradication of all things psychosexual, Jeremy was quoted in an interview with American songwriter as saying, this is us kind of starting over. We made a record and we just kind of threw it out there on Spotify real fast. I didn't really promote it that much and we just kind of kept recording. We haven't stopped since everyone's been in quarantine, so we're actually on album five already. That's how much we've been writing. And we came up with a song called Devil From Hell and I wish that this could have been the first thing that we put out because it just felt like this was the debut to me. Although verbally convincing, I'm not truly sold on the idea of Jeremy believing the sound was off in the initial release. Jeremy stated himself they have four albums worth of music written already, and I really think that shows going into this odd rebranding. I mean, Let the Sin Begin has arguably better lyrics than On Your Grave, and a much better hook on top of that. Quick little update from a piece of information I found as I was editing, Psycho Sinner has nine full-length albums. 10 plus songs each record, nine of them. Who, how can you possibly have done that in two years? That's insane. Okay, well looking at the album artwork and the song names, I guess I can see. Maybe this, maybe this checks out. <laughs> also, I just kind of thought this was a funny side note. They still have the same psychosexual drum heads for all eight of their new music videos under the new name. Bro, how can you afford 35 music videos but you can't get new drum heads? As of today, their most recent song, Rebels of the Underground, is actually performing very well on YouTube in comparison to their other tracks. And with dislikes now removed on YouTube, it has never been a better time for meme bands to thrive. Regardless of how you feel about Jeremy, one thing is certain, he doesn't care. 
I think. So what even is the point of all this? Well, at its core, it's to have fun. Jeremy is someone who has experienced the vastness of life and lived every dream he has ever had. If this is what homie wants to do with his time to make himself happy, then I will gladly keep checking in on it. There's a finite balance online, an ebb and flow to meme culture. This can be very beneficial for Jeremy and beneficial for us in the meme sphere. Just keep being you, Grim Sinna, and don't ruin the meme. You might actually be surprised by the support you get. Just when I thought my day couldn't get any better, I got like a hundred different uh, news feeds. And they all read something, I thought it was a joke at first, but it's very real. And it read, Jason Hook joins forces with Jeremy Spencer. <clears throat> yes! Yes! Let the truth be told! Hey, what's up everyone? This is... Ivan Moody and Jeremy Spencer from Five Finger Death Punch, and we're playing August 9th. Her it's Simpsonville. Yeah, Heritage Park. Woo! You're gonna be there. We're coming! F it! <laughs> Good job. So what'd you guys think of the interesting story of Jeremy Spencer, huh? I'm actually recording this audio out in my car right now. It's about uh, 4 a.m. in the morning, and I was just really inspired to, to make this video. Uh, I've always wanted to get into doing video essays, and I think this was a, a really fun, interesting topic to start with. It was a lot of fun doing research for this and, and writing up a little essay to do and getting more into voiceover. So if you guys enjoyed this, let me know, and if you hated it, let me know. I got a snake to go bite. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out. That's pretty cool. Ha <laughs>